<laughs> you too. How are you? Yeah. Ya? Here, let me just adjust this back a little bit. There we go. And um, it's not, yeah, I'll shift back a little. It's, there uh, we go. It's morning for you. It's just turned six o'clock here in England. Yeah, it's so wonderful that we can connect all around the world. And um, I know. yeah, and I'm I'm just you know, such such a fan of you guys. The the thing about this lockdown, more than anything, or the whole virus coming through, is it really has brought us all together in a weird way. You know. I know. I I feel you a hundred percent. I feel that the building of our our community and community yeah. in general and that we we need to reach out now and it's i feel like it's brought me closer to my my friends and acquaintances and colleagues around the world which has felt really amazing and um yeah you're one I, of those people too <laughs> i agree i think i've spoken to more of our customers i mean i do hundreds of emails every day but i've spoken to more of our customers um just about lovely things not just, you know, I know it's normally brushes, 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 but how's the weather where you are? Oh, the birds are singing now, the plants are coming. People are noticing things more because they're home. So all the things that we have to usually go, you know, day to day and we don't get a chance to look at, it's like, oh, today I couldn't no. believe it. The clouds here were amazing. It's so yeah. such beautiful weather and it makes you appreciate it so much more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And no planes. No aeroplanes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, big reason that I'm so excited to talk to you today is to talk shop about brushes a little. And I wanted to give a little background. Um, earlier this week, I shared this with you a little, is that I had kind of what I feel is my fairy art godfather in my life. Um, this wonderful Japanese brush maker that I first met when I was 12 years old. And I thought I'd show everybody. I just have a long time appreciation for handmade brushes. And my brush maker before I left Tokyo, when um, we lived there when I was 12, made a paintbrush out of my own hair. So and, cool. Um, I've never painted with it. My hair's a little curly. <laughs> but he told me that it was a tradition in Japan and a, and a coming of age gift. And so since I was very young, I've had this sense of art as this tool for connection across cultures languages to really connect us to the world and this has been a reminder for me of um, the the impact of art in my life and so getting to talk with people who make great brushes by hand means a lot to me and understanding and appreciating the craftsmanship of what you do thank you listen not everybody you speak to on a day-to-day -day basis has had a brush made out of their own hair <laughs> so i can understand why you have it in a box <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well, um, listen, let's talk about some of the travel brushes, because I know that y y you use a lot of our travel brushes, which is amazing. And I know a lot of your followers um, love them. I'll tell you, it started off as a, a thing that we got asked to make a couple. So we did a couple of shapes here and there for folks. And really, the more practical that people realized that they could be um, yeah. with painting on the go, you know, I think a lot of people assume that you've got to have a whole easel set up and you need to take an hour and a half out of your life. And actually, yeah. you can do this kind of thing for 10 minutes whilst you're waiting for your partner to run in the, the grocery store. You know, that's that's the nice thing about travel brushes um, that yeah. you know, they're so compact and on the go. Absolutely. And here I'm going to swap over to my desk view. And um, I've got so I've been selling I think we've carried so far four of your um brushes on our website yeah. and you've sent me some others to play with too and I, I may have to carry a few more because I love them so much <laughs> um but uh yeah I wonder if um and well I thought I'd share too you know um I was introduced to them by my friend Jane Blundell who uh you know you get together with your artists and friends and they've got something cool and you say hey uh i want i want that too which is exactly how i reacted to her travel brushes because they just tuck right into the side pockets of um our art toolkits which i find they incredibly convenient and on projects that i've done personally for like my expeditionary art um you know, this is your, one of your bigger models here, um, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about. But going to Antarctica and Greenland, Alaska, it's been just hugely helpful to have. Oh, and I label them so I don't accidentally um, send them off or uh, have anyone else walk off with them. Um, but to have a brush that's protected in its own little capsule here 
and then still be a super functional length. I just love it. So we, do you want me to, what I've, I've, what I've bought back from the workshop, because I'm at my home now, but I've bought back some of the travel brushes as we would ship them out to folks. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe um, I could just quickly talk about the construction of them so, so, so people know what we're talking about. Right? I, I love that. And could you just give us a little bit of background too? I know it's your mom who founded the company. And yeah. could, could you so, share just a little bit of your backstory as well, sure. Sydney? Whilst with your family? Open, yeah, whilst I open this up, I'll talk but so that you guys can see. So um, here's an example for you. So my mom um, started making brushes 35 years ago. Well, 36 years ago now. She, um, we actually have a great video on YouTube if you ever want to watch it, anybody. If you just type in Rosemary Co on YouTube. Um, that, we, that really gives you the full five-minute backstory. Uh, but it, it basically, she used to make my uncle's fish flies. Um, she was a nurse for the NHS, and she, uh, she didn't want the daily nursing career any longer um, and wanted a bit of freedom um, from the nine to five kind of, well, it was, she did a lot of night shifts. Anyway, she, my uncle said to her, well, if you can make and tie fish flies, you can probably make brushes. So at that point, she started to deconstruct her usual brushes because she was an oil painter um, and she flew over to Japan and learned how to make brushes in Japan um, mm. and came back to the UK and taught all of the girls that we now have um, making the brushes so it, we went from all those years ago before I was born mum's mum used to supply all the pottery industry in uh, Stoke-on-Trent which is where I was born so if you've heard of Port Merion or Wedgwood or Spode those kind of folks. And then as you, you know, as time went on, more and more people would say, Rosemary's come in today. Do you need any brushes? And it would go down the lines. And then before you knew it, um, people would ring mum directly and say, oh, I need so-and-so. And then we set up a website about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, 12 years ago. And then before we know it now, um, a lot of the pottery trade is no more. And now we ship direct to artists um, all over the world. So oh, that's, that's so fantastic. Cool. Yeah. And you're still, you know, family business with, with, with yeah. Rosemary still in the business and you and it sounds like a really wonderful community. This is the travel brush then. So it comes in this little pocket and then you that's just for um, packaging wise. It comes like this. So it's got our logo on the outside. These are aluminium um, ferrules and cases so they don't rust which is really important especially when you're on the go you don't want any kind of hassle yeah um so one of the things is that you would just get the end like this and pull it out i had a customer email me once and say you sent me the brush but there was no brush and i said i think you've just got to remember to try and pull that bit out um they got confused so you pull that side out and then th the cool thing about them is that you flip them in and they they assemble like so so all in all, the length of it is from my thumb to my, the end of my finger. So it yeah. gives you an idea. It's kind of a little bit longer than a biro or a, a regular pen. And they, um, they still have a nice balance too, I find. I mean, right now I'm balancing this on my finger about at the midpoint. So it's got yeah. a really nice feel in its hand, I find, in my hand, I find. Well, that's, that's because this part is so light, you see. So yeah. you still got, the, which is kind of why it acts like a normal brush the minute that you hold it like that so that the balance balances down to the end of the brush, which is obviously the side that you're then going to use. Yeah. Um, just one quick note on that part there, that, that um, mm -hmm. system of doing this. Sometimes some of the travel brushes might be a little bit rocky. Um, and that purely is the fact that if we, if we put them in, sometimes they might have the snuggest fit. All you mm -hmm. need to do your end at home is just get the cap and just squeeze it between your fingers and make it a little bit more of an oval shape. Or if, you, if you've um, got weaker wrists, you just put it on a table and either push it down with the side of your hand or a book or something like that, just to just slightly knock it off of being totally circle and just slightly more oval. And then and it'll then give it a fit. squeeze. Mm. Yeah, it'll tuck perfectly into there. So it's, they're on a pearl handle usually. We put them on a pearl handle. Um, and we've still got the double crimp on there and then the normal ferrule. So most of our travel brushes are our normal heads of the brushes. Yeah. So if you think, I don't know if I like that. If you've already got some of our brushes, you'd know if it was a travel or not. You know, if, if it went to be in a travel brush, it would 
be very similar. But we've, we've now got 23, can you believe it, different oh. shows. Oh, you better send me some more then. <laughs> I know, right? I keep adding them and mum keeps saying, why are you adding them? And I honestly, first of all, I know I can say for a fact that we are the largest travel brush. We have the largest travel brush range. We might yeah. not sell the most, but we, we definitely have the largest range. Um, and secondly, my mission in all of this is to make traveling easy with your brushes. So I want people... Yeah to be able to go out and have no excuse. Now, often we say, especially if you're, we call the amateur, but part-time painter, you just like painting, but you don't get to do it full time. The joy of these little ones are, especially that kit that you do is amazing because it's on the go. You can have oh, it yeah. in the car, you can have it in the airport, you can have it on the airplane, you yeah. can have it wherever you want. You My know, small like, one goes absolutely everywhere, whether or not I have plans to paint. And now that I have this, super cute teeny teeny tiny water cup um it's the perfect complement to um, maria can to i tell brushes. you something about that that is exactly like the the cup that i use for my puppy when we go on walks <laughs> but I, just, I have a bigger one for max uh-huh i think they're brilliant I see it. this is the smallest one i found <laughs> they i am with you 100 percent. yeah just making art supplies accessible so it's, yeah. you know, the camera you have is the one you use. The art supplies you have are the one you use. But why not make them the best art supplies possible that you can use all the time? And yeah. it, it, it's so much more fun to use really quality supplies, no matter our activity as well. I mean, that's something I feel. Um, Simi, you forgot to mention, too, in with uh, one of the features of your brushes that I appreciate is at the top of the handle, there's a little hole. And right. So the idea of that is that once the brush is wet, the minute you need to pack up and you've got to get out of there, you can just fold it straight back in and it'll dry within. Um, it's actually, we were talking about this the other day, it, it's better to put your brush back in wet because yeah. you never get those bed back hairs then. If you wait for it to dry, the chances are it, you know, you might hit a hair putting it back yeah, in. Yeah, um, exactly. So I'll usually give mine like a little rinse, final rinse, and then I usually kind of bring it to a point with my fingers just to kind of show, hey, you know, and then I just carefully put it in and then it just dries inside. Yeah, that's awesome. The other thing <laughs> I forgot to mention is at the base of the brush where we can, we try and print what, sh what style that brush is. So it's really poor camera. Sorry. Yeah. But it can you see kind of there it says R2. So Oh yeah, I've got the R2 in my hand as well. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mine's a new yeah. one. This, this is actually one of the most popular new ones we brought. So what, what number I, is that one? The R16. Oh, is that the big one? Oh, someone asked a question about that too. What was one of your more popular? So this is the Great Big Dagger, which I yeah. just started playing with. One of the things to try and up our game on the travel brush front was we really wanted to be able to go for larger sizes because as much as it's, it's like anything, isn't it? When you offer something, as soon as you offer it, artists always want a little bit more and a little bit more. So I saw somewhere in the comments, someone put, this is awesome because I'm always used to rounds. Well, we yeah. start with rounds, then people ask for flats. So we get flats. Then they say, oh, can you do a filbert? Okay, so we'll do a filbert. Then it's, you, know, you can imagine. So once yeah. it gets to that point, it's like, Oh, can you do a larger one? So the problem we had for a long time was the cases. We could only get these cases. Now we've managed to source the larger cases, which if you if I put um two together, I know they're different ends, so ignore that, but you can see lengthwise the length, but also how much thicker the cases are. Yeah. Yeah. There it's a little bit of a burlier brush for the wider yeah. for the wider hair. Now, the reason for that is, um, and some folks have asked if we can do the bigger brush on the smaller slimline fit, but first mm -hmm. of all, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit in the case, mm -hmm. you can see there how it, it sticks out if we tried to fit that in the case. And secondly, the balance. It's really important that the balance is, like we mentioned earlier, is, is yeah. feels good. So that's why we had to get the bigger case, but we've got it. Um, well, well, I think I know what I might be ordering from you soon. <laughs> um, with uh, the daggers, I've had a few people ask about daggers, and I think it'd also be great to jump to um, talking about the different kinds of hair. So where do you want to begin with our um, with sure. the, the materials and then maybe talking about the styles? Yeah, why not? So yeah. first of all, it's important to know that 
um, we do synthetic, which just in case, just to, to make it clear to folks, is vegan friendly. Um, and then we do a mix, which is 50% synthetic and 50% um, sable, which are in the daggers. That we're, uh, is that we're, in the large doing. dagger as well, Simi? The two. The two okay. of them are a 50-50 mix. And you might ask, why, why would you need the mix? Well, the whole point is that if you had just Kalinsky sable in, in the dagger, it would be really expensive. Um, and secondly, is that the retention, the water holding carrying capacity and the point to the brush is a league above in sable. So what we decided was to, to pull the price down, but still get the best of both worlds that we do it on a red sable mix. Okay. Do, so, about what about what percentage do you know? Because I feel like your sable brushes still like they they have the, the suppleness, you know, that yeah. I experienced with sable versus um, the springiness of the synthetic. It's 50-50. It's a 50% okay. mix. Um, but it's amazing what it can do, you know. And, it, and like I say, the main thing for folks is that it pulls the price down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the marks that you can make if we just quickly talk about the dagger in particular. So sure. That's, yeah. If anyone writes it down, it's the R16 is the larger one and the R12 is the smaller one. Um, they're really popular for um, landscapes in particular trees like Maria's shown us now you can do grasses you can do fur uh, you can do really fine lines with them a lot of people struggle with fine lines and a rigger could be more difficult to use in that sense you've got the body of the brush behind you um, which is why people like them if you follow an artist called Liz Steele who's yeah. good friend with Jane Bundell as well she uses the dagger for almost everything she does and she does yeah. a lot of architectural things you know uh, yeah. but and with you can get with that Maria's... nice big broad where if you even want to use it as a wash brush to um, right. a smaller sheet of paper, you can really lay down that wash. Well, you'll also see how thin a line you can then get with it. You know? Oh, yeah. Plus, it, it has a um, one reason I like the dagger is just that, you know, if you want to like twist it or some of those calligraphic marks, I feel right. are really accessible. Um, and it looks cool. <laughs> it's fun to use. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're fun because they loosen you up. It's not like yeah. a regular round where you're constricted to know and you've got the point. And even though you can use a round on its side, we all know what rounds do as a general rule. Mm -hmm. But it, it's quite fun to then force yourself to loosen up. And that's what the dagger does. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I think that's why they're so popular. Um, another one we do, I don't know if you've got one there, is an R5. Uh, sorry, R7. Oh, I don't know if I have your R7. I'll show oh, you wait, do one. I? Let me see. Is that one of the little... It's this one. Oh, oh, so, oh, where is um, this one? Yeah, I've just started playing with this one a little bit. Oh, wait, I have the R4. Maybe I don't have your R7. You've got the R4. So the R4 is a flat, a long flat. The R7 is um, a coma. So I'm wondering if you can see. Oh, can interesting. A little can bit. You... Yeah, the tip looks a little um, irregular. Yeah, the, it's jaggedy points. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea of those, again, for really easy things, is grasses. It kind of loosens you up similarly to the dagger um, because you've not got the harshness of an edge um, and also you've got the body behind you. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're quite fun. And so for those, so the two of the flat points I have, I've got your R4 and yep. your R20. And um, are these sable or a blend they're as well? They're both sable. Uh -huh. No, they're both sable. Um, the R20 is a brand new one. The R4 we've done for a couple of years now, but the R20 I just brought out in January. Oh, okay. Um, and it's, again, that's on the larger casing to try and give it a bit more body. So it's a size six. It's the yeah. largest I could fit on there. Because a lot of people do just like working with a flat brush. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, if we're going to, if we're going to do a, a flat brush, we should do a big one. Um, yeah. So that, that, yeah, they're really nice. And then the R, the R, this other flat, the R4 is a little bit longer and more supple. And this is outside yeah. of sort of my painterly vocabulary. I'm not used to this type style of brush as much. It's fun to use. Do you, can you describe it a little bit? Yeah, so the R4 is a long flat, really useful for loosening up a stroke. Um, so you can go in for your, for your fine detail if you want to, right the way through to a bit, making your big, large washes. Um, on its side, you can still get like, you know, all those cute little textural marks, but also really nice fine chiseled edges you, you can get with them, you know. 
Um, so, so they they cover a multitude. This is the thing I think to tr keep trying to remember is that the shape of the brush can can be used to your advantage. A lot oh, of absolutely. Time. And you know, you're describing something, Simi, that I really appreciate, which is so so we stock, and I'm also a fan of a water brush because I think these are versatile, yeah. handy, especially if you don't have kind of the time or space to set up a little water or start using your coffee cup for water. But yeah. um, these are limited in sort of the expressiveness of the tip. And yeah. I think it, what you're describing about kind of those more energetic dynamic marks and things that you can get with a fiber brush and, um, uh, you know, this range of points, I think makes it a, just a perfect addition to any art kit to have, you know, one or two or a whole quiver of your travel brushes when um, they, they just have, they're more lively, I believe. And, um, but, you know, this is not to say I don't, I love travel brushes and I've done a whole bunch with, with just water brushes, I mean. But when I want to really extend the range of possibility and mark making, I find your, your line of brushes is just invaluable. Um, Thank you. Well, guess what? We've got 3,000 ranges, so I'm thrilled you said that. Because <laughs> if you didn't, we might as well give up now. Hey, <laughs> You know what I wanted to show you? Um, uh -huh. I don't know if you've seen it, but I definitely wanted to just basically highlight to, to beginners more than anything um, yeah. at this point was a lot of the time we, we get this immediate fear that, oh my gosh, this is going to be too expensive. I can't get into this. You know, where do I start? And, yeah. you know, you've got to work your way up. And, and a lot of the time people say, buy the best you can afford. Well, we have brought out I, I managed to convince mom to allow me to basically some of our learner brush makers that needed to get up to speed with these I've I've been allowed to let them test on some of our less expensive is the nicest way of saying it hair um, so the R17 18 and 19 are are a little sable but they are a finer sable and a um they aren't they aren't the kalinsky sable and they're not pure red sable they're a lower grade but the idea is they're made the same um but they're at a much lower price point so if you ever want to try a mop brush or a kalinsky sable or just a travel brush and you think i don't know where to start here they're a good little inexpensive way in as, oh, as an that's idea. wonderful yeah i wasn't as familiar with those yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to try some. And I know that you do ship to the U.S. So if people do want to buy straight from your website, they're welcome to. And then um, we'll... I would um, honestly I, say, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I'd say the first way to, if you want travel brushes, to go through Art Toolkit, because these guys have got lots of our brushes in stock when, when we get them out to them, they, they put them online and they sell like hotcakes. So that's, and that's, we'll, be, we'll be expanding our line of what we offer. <laughs> Right, but also they also sell all the other bits that yeah. you probably want to have a look at. So I definitely say there's a good good starting point. Obviously, you've got our website, we, which is rosemaryandco.com. I actually have our hoodie on right now. Look, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, but we ship direct all over the world, um, FedEx or um, UPS um, from our website. We obviously have all the ranges on there. But watch this space. Maria might carry more. Who knows? You know. But if we ever add things, it always goes back to our website. Um, and then, you know, other than that, then we have got a distributor in America as well under Wind River. And they've got a couple of our travel brushes at hand. Um, but yeah, between the three of us or us two mainly, there's nothing that we can't ship to you, you know. Yeah, and if, if um, I'll say to any of my audience, if there's something you're really excited about, and I got to say, I think this um, R16 might be coming soon, um, to let me know. Uh, cause I'm, I'm really open to feedback and ideas, and I, I, I tend to be pretty picky in um, trying to get to know any supplies myself, too, in my own art practice before we offer them. And if there's anything anyone has been trying and really likes, um, let me know, and we, we can explore that. Um, so, Simi, we've talked about the daggers. And we've talked yes. a little bit about these flats. And then yeah. there's a whole slew of um, like some rounds and mops you also offer. And I've got three right here that are three different materials. And so, yeah. um, and these, one of them we don't offer yet. This is the R, um, oh, let's see. It's the, I'm looking at your sable, R2. The R2, the little one. Yeah. And then I also have your R10 synthetic, golden synthetic. And then yeah. I have the R9, which... Um, I know there's a lot of people who have been really excited about this and they are going to come back eventually. Um, 
Do you know, honestly, I'm going to be sending out to you guys in the next week or so some more R9s, but I'll tell everybody now, I'm not going to be putting them on our website. Um, I owe Maria 200 R9s, so I'm <laughs> sending them to her straight away. So the problem is that the R9s, the squirrel hair, we've been really struggling to try and get the length of hair. Um, we've, well, secretly I found a box the other day, so we've, we're making some as we speak. Um, and I'm not going to restock our website until I know Maria's got what she needs to sell to her, you know, followers and, and crew. So, oh, um, we love you, Simi. Yeah, and we'll be, uh, I know why they're so popular because the thing is, squirrel as a, as a hair, um, they point beautifully. You can see there. That's not a new brush Maria's got, and it's it, they point gorgeous. But they also carry lots of pigment. So they really make making washes um, and, and getting that paint down. Like we, we keep saying, if you're in a rush, you know, they really do carry a ton. Um, yeah, just they've got I don't, want, mm -hmm. I don't want to plug them too much because if, if we sell out of those and then we haven't got any more, I don't want anybody to think that we haven't got anything else. But the squirrel is, is really nice. Um, yeah, it's a more supple hair. Do you know anything kind of about why it absorbs more pigment yeah. or, uh-huh? we use canadian squirrel um and it's it, it, it basically the strands of hair that are more reluctant no opposite word to reluctant more um likely to to carry and pull in the water so that therefore they don't just drop out the water they they become bulbous they soak it in yeah, you can see how um, fat this brush gets like i've just loaded yeah. it with water and it's like a sponge yeah, that, that's it, you know, and, and the thing, you've got to think, when it gets back to the actual animal itself, the animals, obviously their coats are to keep them warm. So squirrels aren't daft, they keep them warm. But I, I think at this point I should say, the only part of the animal that we can use for making brushes is the tail. The rest of the animal is, is no use to us. And I have to tell you that the animals would either be... Um, killed or eaten um, and the tails are usually thrown away or discarded so we are a byproduct at that point because they can't do anything with the tails oh that's fascinating I wasn't aware of that and that's great to hear because I, I know as an artist I really value quality and things that will last and growing up sure. with my collection of Japanese brushes I have things from you know sable and horse and um, squirrel and sheep and just thinking about a good brush can last a long time. Yeah. And yeah. synthetic, I, 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 have, I see appeal as synthetic too, but there's also impact of synthetics in our world. And so I, I, I haven't always seen it as a black and white question of wit, which to support. And my feeling, at least where I've come to personally, is if you invest in a tool and make it last and really right. appreciate it and extend that lifetime as long as you can and that's something we really try in all the products we carry too we really try and build them to last and be durable then you've got something where it's got a lifetime of use and um yeah. and, and and your brushes like you mentioned I've, I've had some of these a bit and they they do last and if you take good care of them um uh, so great to hear more about that that squirrel hair simmy and i have a question too my the early um squirrels we had from you were um, the different quill construction. Um, the wire you, bound. Yeah, the wire bound. Would you, um, and, and, I, and then I know we started doing the feral and yeah. I, performance wise, they feel like identical to me. They, they're well, both the same let me, diameters. Let me tell and... you about that. So mm -hmm. back in the day, everybody thought that, well, the only way you could make brushes was with the quill, was mm -hmm. the old fashioned quill style. So we carried on making quill brushes. Um, however, as time's moved on, the quill actually stands for no purpose other than really to look at. It looks mm -hmm. a little bit more retro, maybe a little more old school. Perhaps people like that side of it. But the actual performance of the head of the brush makes no difference whether it's in the ferrule or on the quill. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people, uh, common misconception would be that they thought that the, the quill would allow more pigment to to fly up the edge of the quill and therefore that it would have a longer carrying capacity but the glue stops at the base anyway so mm -hmm. it, other than looks it doesn't look much much different you know oh, th the, yeah the thanks for it. clarifying that and I, I quite like the look of the um the ferrule it's really clean it's not going to get snagged on anything and it yeah um, it fits beautifully in with the rest of the line um yeah thank you um so uh so yeah squirrel like a really absorbent uh hair 
and very soft. Um, yeah, and some artists may even find it too soft. For me, I really, really enjoy that tip. And so comparing it then to like a, a sable and synthetic, uh, how would you describe that from your perspective? Okay, so first of all, the carrying capacity, no doubt you're going to carry more pigment in a squirrel brush than the others. Yeah. Um, but that snap that you just mentioned, that can drive people nuts because squirrel is so soft that you can push it down on its side and it stays there yeah you know, like it, it doesn't really yeah. snap back whereas if i showed you um well you you what's the one on the far left is that the far artist? left is your sable and the golden synthetic is in the middle and so the golden yeah. synthetic to me is the snappiest where it'll just yeah. it just really wants to keep or it's got spring too it really wants to keep that nice point that's because of the runner synthetic that's in it. So yeah. the, the nice thing about that is it lowers the price point somewhat, but it also has that snappy, um, um, energetic feel that, you know, really you can be accurate and precision. Um, the, the pure sable over again is where you're really going to have the brush for a lifetime. Um, you know, pure sable, the point always wears down better than, than the others. Um, they carry the, okay, let me say it like this. You've got synthetic red sable blend, pure red sable, and then Kalinsky sable. And honestly, it's like a Ferrari. Kalinsky sable's the best. But that doesn't mean that one down from that, in other words, it could be red sable or the red sable blend with the synthetic in there, um, isn't a good Rolls Royce. Sometimes it's too expensive to buy just sable. Um, and I get that, you know, and in which case then you'd say, right, okay, well, I'm going to meet you halfway here and, and, and you get that with the red sable blend. Yeah, and I, I found that um, I really like the, the, I think the golden synthetic just seems like such a nice ac accessible brush, um, maybe similar hair. to that line you mentioned of your, some of your smaller um, synthetics to, or uh, the um, R17, 18, 19. Um, but yeah, the R10, I find this to be a nice size, this eight, when you're working kind of sketchbook size, because you can lay it on its side, gets that nice point. The spring means that it's sort of responsive um, and you're not going to be spending as much as much money. But, yeah. um, but moving up to the sable, the sable is, I think, just a really nice balance and feel between kind of that squirrel which is so absorbent, and then the synthetic. It's kind of that best of both worlds in the middle and a, and a fun tip. Um, and um, yeah. You know, if I had to say three travel brushes that I don't think anyone should live without, mm -hmm. I think one of them has to be the dagger. Um, that then, I'm not going to say whether it's the small or the large, so the R12 or R16. That's personal choice. If you, got, if you wanted a larger dagger or a smaller, you make that decision for how large you paint. Um, but I definitely would say you, you wouldn't want to live without a, a, a dagger brush. You need one pointed round, I'd say. This is if we lived in a world where you're only allowed three. Of course, you can buy all of them. Um, but if you, if you could only buy three, it would be one of the dagger ones. I definitely would say the R, is it the R13? This one is a really popular one of ours. It's the Sable Synthetic Mix of of the r10 that maria was mentioning which is 100 percent synthetic um the r13 is is popular because of the price point but also that size just seems to tick the box for folks and it's a way of you saying right i'm going to try and try some kalinsky sable but not quite get there yet um so i definitely would say they'd be on my list mm -hmm. two that i wouldn't live without and then if I had to think of one other, I'd either say the squirrel for the carrying capacity, um, because it really, it, you know, it doesn't half flood the paper for you and, and really get you going on any washes you need. Um, and like you said, you could do some fun, quirky things. Um, but if, if pushed to come to shove with me, it would probably be this one, the rigger. I was just uh, hoping we could talk about the rigger, because I think it's a really fun brush. brush. Yeah. So they'd be my, because, you know, Maria, some folks just say, well, pick them for me, help me out. Well, if, if I had to pick three, it would be the, the rigger, sorry, the rigger, this one, the, R, the R13, and then either of the travel, of the, of the dagger yeah. travel. Um, I think that'd be a good, like, starting, you know, to, to get people going. And so, yeah, we just started carrying this rigger, and 
I really, so I gravitate towards this brush for a couple of reasons. One is talking about like expressiveness with a tip. Um, since it is so long, it's about like an inch long. It, um, you can push it down, pick it up, and it, it can hold a lot of pigment. So you can, one of the values of a rigger is doing like really long lines. But I also, this, this rigger is fairly absorbent. And I think it's nice. It reminds me of some of my Sumi brushes where you can yeah. squish it down on its side, pick it up and just play with some of these kind of calligraphic marks that especially say in like the foreground of a sketch or depending on your approach, you might just want to um, play with. And for me, like as I'm just noodling around here, I'm even holding it from the end and moving my whole arm from my shoulder, just letting um, my painting, my, my playing be this more whole body. I'm not gonna do like really tiny close up marks with this. It feels kind of more gestural in how I like to use it. Um, I think it's a really cool brush. I think, you know, you've made just such a good point there of, of how to use a brush. I think we all immediately, when we pick up a brush, we go like this. You know, the rigger, by the way, someone just asked is the R5. Um, mm -hmm. But when we all straight away go to, to doing this technique. And I think what Maria's just said is so invaluable for us all to remember is express yourself from the shoulder down. This is an extension of here your arm so don't just hold it like you would you always can of course especially when you need thin fine lines and you want the detail that a rigger should give you signature at the end um calligraphy you know where you've really got to get up close but where where you can try and hold it differently try and hold it at the other end you know try try and move your wrist more and let the brush work for you more more than just you know oh this is the point so i can only draw with it well no like maria said you can hold it on its side and make it work for you fully so that you get the full breadth of the of the, of the brush and make all of the sides of the brush work well that, that's so fun to hear your your top three picks because I, I know one question we got was you know if i was on if we were on a desert island what might be one color and one brush <laughs> And what was your brush? Well, it's hard for me. I might go squirrel because I really like the softness. It, it appeals. Again, I come from a background of using a lot of these um, Japanese brushes and really yeah. gravitate towards that. I think um, I like the way it feels in my hand. And then my color <laughs> would probably be, I just love, I've been demonstrating some with it too, this Indian Throne Blue from Daniel Smith because you can push kind of light value and dark value with monochrome, a little bit more interesting than black and white. And I, I as many people know, I've done a lot of painting in polar regions. So I, I really gravitate towards cool blues and grays and um, enjoy that. So, but yeah, I think this, this might be my pick. It's hard because after playing with all these others, I'm tempted to say, well, maybe I need a, a dagger. <laughs> you know, honestly. Um, but I this was one of the you. first, mm -hmm, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was just gonna say, I can't tell you how when we introduced the dagger brush, it, it was as if we changed people's lives as a travel brush because they absolutely love them. Um, and, and I would urge anybody, if you've got a birthday coming up, get yourself a dagger brush. Or if somebody's got a dagger brush, ask if you can try it. That might even be a free way for you to see if you like it. But it, it's so much fun. And I, I honestly, I've got to tell you, so many people do most of their paintings if you, if you only have one. Um, most of people can do everything they need with a dagger brush. Yeah, something I, I love like with the little dagger in my, my work is you can use that edge even to kind of like stamp, like to stamp out some little lines. Like let's say you're doing some architecture and, um, and kind of stamping out little edges for windows or yeah, working right. from that line to that wide mark, get that whole range. Um, yeah. Do you I, have I'm... anything? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, and the, and the beauty of it is, um, I think the most important thing to say is, whatever our favourites are, might be someone else's complete, complete opposite. The beauty of it is that you're never going to spend a fortune with travel brushes. You would if you got one of everything, of course. But what I mean is, for, for relatively less money or little money, I don't mean to sound shrewd there, but you can get yourself three or four and get going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, and it doesn't doesn't Sorry, take much. Topic. Yeah, even though even right. though I'm, I'm pretty much addicted to art supplies and I want them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get to know it's, get it's get to know, to know your tools. Yeah, it's good to know though that you can afford to get going with not so many. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have anything fun in the works we should know about uh, that you can talk about? Uh huh. Well. I wanted to say, we, we discussed earlier in the week about potentially doing the Eradicator on, um, as a travel brush. I think everybody likes the Eradicator that tries it because it, it's such a short, tight little, little flat. Have you got one over there or I, not? I don't. The only flat from you I have is the, um, yeah, this bigger R20. But I've, everyone okay. keeps telling me about the Eradicator, which well, is why I asked you about it. I'll tell you what I'll do um, as an exclusive for now. I will make an eradicator on a travel brush and send you the first prototype. Oh, and so fun. if you like it, then we'll release it. But if oh you don't goodness. like it, we won't launch it. But I think people <laughs> like it because it doubles up as a little mini flat and it's great for, for all those, so, so, you know, all the, the, the great things that you get from a flat. So your you know, long um, marks, but also your fine chisel edge. But the nice thing about the eradicator versus the R20, that big flat on the right there. Yeah. Uh, is that it's it's just a little bit shorter, so you can pull out paint with it. You can really, and, and it's like an oopsie brush. If you've made a mistake, you can go right up to the edge of it, rub it from side to side, and it'll pull the paint off where, where you know, if you wanted a sharp edge or for something to end at a point and you didn't manage to hit that mark, you can go back in. And, and the other nice thing about it is if, you, if you're on the go, you've got to get going, but you get home and afterwards you think that was a bit off you can then get your eradicator and just quickly pull it back, you know, and all it takes is wetting it up, um, water or, you know, and, and just going back in and it'll, it's not on your really dark darks, but it should pull, pull back somewhat. So it's, it's a nice little gimmick, I guess, like a gadget, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Something, something you can slip in. And I have to say, I am guilty of always wanting to tuck in. I always seem to find space for one more, you know, one more little sketchbook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Extra little towels and um Can you just do me a full tour of that kit? Oh absolutely. Like yeah, here let me scoot these aside a little bit. Um I I need to send you a kit to me to play with. That's what I need to do. I'll trade I'd you for one. my um my travel eradicator. Yeah, so I'd we do one. two. I'm just gonna pull up my camera a little bit uh so we can see a bit more. Um we have two sizes of art toolkits that we offer and um, in a couple different colors. So one is set for um, a pocket moleskin size. And I have to say, we've had a lot of requests for, let's see if I get the sizes right, the A5, A6, um, the more European sizes. And I'm working on it, everybody. I'm, I'm playing with some ideas right now. Um, but this is designed really so that the sketchbook fits inside. And our full kits um, that we sell on our website come with a water brush, ruler, pen. These are my personal ones. So they're a little bit um, scattered right now and slightly unpacked, but the palettes fit right in these side pockets. Uh, so, so you can brilliant. carry a whole selection. Uh, so brilliant. And then what I love is that the small one has one pocket and then these here, or you can also just carry one palette, it's up to you. And then the big kit has three, but these just fit your brushes. Um, brilliantly because that's so with good. the size let me just get my squirrel tucked away here put that carefully back in um you can tuck a good a good bunch of brushes in and again i i always end up just you know when i've got something new to play with just slipping in another and then i think well maybe i need just one more <laughs> and pop that in and it um, goes out with 16 brushes <laughs> and 10 minutes to paint <laughs> that's right that's right um yeah so um that that's our kits and so we do our palettes too in two little sizes of um this little tiny demi palette and then um uh, a larger larger size and that's um so for those of you listening here um we might have in the works another little palette project too. So stay tuned because I, I get, I've had some ideas simmering and um, we have some things in the works as well. So it's, it's awfully, awfully fun. And, um, but so your brushes are just like the perfect complement, and gosh, they're just so beautiful. I mean, as little objects, I am drawn towards um, things that are clean, well-made and, um, Thank you. you know, uh, do what they do well. And, 
yours fit our suite just perfectly. And I, I'm so thrilled to get to work with you and to get to know you better, Simi. Well, I want to just say, because I, I know folks are going to ask after, so to avoid um, questions and a hundred of them flying in, if anybody, I know people have put, where do I get these? So just to remind anybody that joined us after, you can either go through the Art Toolkit Instagram account and then have a look on their website and see what they've got in stock, or you can go to rosemaryandco.com. Um, Rosemary is in the herb, my mum, rosemaryandco.com. And then if you just go, it's super easy. If you go to the top right to the search bar and just type in the word travel, you'll see all of the travel brushes come up. That's a really quick and easy way to find them. Um, but I, I actually do want to say um, what I would love to do for, for everybody for the next 24 hours. So whilst this stays live on Instagram, um, I'm going to offer everybody, wherever you are in the world, um, free shipping on any brushes that you buy in the next 24 hours from us. Um, all you have to do is go to our website, like I say, and put your order in, and then we'll refund you retrospectively. So it's for the airmail shipping. That's that's really important because if I refund you for the other shipping, it just costs too much money. But I can I can refund you for the airmail. So that's 10 to 14 working days, a little longer at the moment because of the virus. But um, and the the only exception would be if the website doesn't acknowledge where you're from because some places example sri lanka at the moment or um south africa we can't ship to at the moment just because they're not allowing they're not allowing planes or cargo in um but if we can ship and i know we can definitely ship to america and all of europe um if we can ship to you i'll give you free shipping so put in the notes section we, i watch simi and maria and i'll refund your shipping oh that's so generous of you simi and um thank you so much and also um to hear about, you know, when we have our next round of um, R9s in and um, yeah. other brushes that we carry and the other projects that we're up to, um, our mailing list is the best place to hear about that first. And um, we've got a link to that in our bio. And um, I usually give our mailing list sort of the first dibs and then post to Instagram. So um, best place to clue in. And Simi, let's, uh, let's chat. Uh, We'll chat some more and um, I'm excited to have a few more brushes in our range and so excited for what's to come. Definitely. If, if any of your customers um, have any suggestions or they want to see any other brushes as travel brushes, let us know. Um, I can't promise it, but I can try. Let's say it like that. And, and usually it's, it's um, boils down to if it's logistically okay, if we can make enough of them for our regular orders and then for travel brushes. And also, like we mentioned earlier about the casings, if I can't get the balance right, there's no point in us doing it. Um, but we'll definitely, I'll definitely send you the eradicator as a travel brush and then you can just, you can be the decider <laughs> if it goes ahead, okay? I'll, I'll have to put out a survey. <laughs> <laughs> play with that oh well Simi thank you and um thank My you pleasure. and please to thank your mom and your team for the work that you're doing and staying I safe will. and continuing to um create and innovate and I know we didn't talk about them today but as you explore if anyone wants to visit you know Rosemary's website there is a whole world of other brushes there to explore oh, not just their travel brush line we should do this another time just not on travel brushes on some other mm -hmm. brushes we should definitely do that so that people can hear your feedback and I think it's really great for everybody I think they'll all agree seeing you paint whilst I'm talking about them and things it's super helpful for people so